Good day, students. Today, we will be discussing lesson six, prepare stock sauces and soups. Objective, at the end of the lesson, number one, the learner can identify types of stocks, sauces, and soups. And number two, to be able to explain the importance of stocks, sauces, and soups. Prepare stocks for required menu item. Again, let's first discuss or define what is stocks. Stocks. It is a flavorful liquid prepared by simmering meaty bones from meat or poultry, seafoods, and or vegetables in water with aromatics until their flavor, aroma, color, and body and nutritive value are extracted. Okay, class. In other words, when you say stocks, it is a clear, thin liquid flavor by suitable substances which is extracted from meat, poultry, and fish, and their bones, and from vegetables and seasonings. Did you know that stocks is considered as the fin de cuisine? It is referred to in French as fin de cuisine or the foundations of cooking. That's why stocks are the most or among the most basic preparation found in professional kitchen. Ingredients in preparing stocks. Number one, bones. The kind of bones just determine the kind of stock except vegetable stock. Bones contain collagen which when simmered forms gelatin. The more gelatin there is, the more body it will have. When chilled, a good stock should actually solidify. There are types of bones that are naturally high in cartilage includes the so-called knuckle bones, which is found in large joints, and the other one is bones of the younger animals, such as the veil bones. These two are the best in making stocks. Number two, Mirepoix. Mirepoix is the French term for the combination of coarsely chopped onions, carrots, and celery used to flavor stocks. In other words, when you say mirepoix, again, it is a mixture of chopped celery, onions, and carrots, which is actually a flavor base that is made from, of course, cooked, diced vegetables and usually with butter, oil, or fat for a long time on a low heat without coloring or browning. Number two, mirepoix is the French term for a combination of coarsely chopped onions, carrots, and celery used to flavor stocks. Okay, class, in other words, when you say again mirepoix, just remember, it is a mixture of chopped celery, onions, and carrots. That is a flavor base made from cooked, diced vegetables, usually with butter, oil, or fat, for a long time on a low, low heat without coloring or browning. A spider cooking, often with addition of tomato puree to create a darkened brown mixture. Number three, Acid products. Acid help connected tissue and extract flavor and body from bones. Remember guys that the role of the acid in making stocks, it helps to break down the cartilage and other connected tissues in bones, thus accelerating the formations of gelatin. The acid products used are generally one of the another of the following. One example is tomato. Tomato is used for brown stocks, which use some sort of tomato products that usually like tomato paste, which also adds colors and flavor to the stocks. Other example of acid product is the wine. White stocks and chicken stocks sometimes use white wine, and fish stocks almost always does. But remember, or one thing to remember is that acid reacts with aluminum cookware. 
That's why it is advisable that we need to use stainless steel as stock pad for making stocks. Number four, scraps and leftovers. Scraps may be used in stock if they are clear, wholesome, and appropriate to the stocks being made. So this is just for being frugality. Saving all your scraps except spoiled or moldy uh, pieces, of course. So it is okay to use vegetable pieces which is slightly past their frame, such as wilted or limp vegetables. Save the fillings, the skins, the leaves, roots, and ends or stalks, or even the stems are unused spice, uh, pieces can use or can be used almost in making a stocks. Number five, seasoning and spices. Remember class, when seasoning stocks, stocks is often further reduced like when making demi-glaze or demi-glass. For instance, salting the stock would make the resulting demi-glass much too salty. That's why it is better to make a habit of seasoning your sauces just before serving rather than salting your stocks. Number six, bouquet garni. Assortment of fresh herbs and aromatic ingredients tied in a bundle with string so it can be removed easily from the stocks. In other words, when you say bouquet carne, again, it is a bundle of herbs and aromatics tied with cooking twine. Just like in the picture. Types of stocks. Number one, we have white stocks. A clear, pale liquid made by simmering poultry, vegetables, or fish, or fish bone rather. So, white stocks can be made again with, or bale or chicken without colored seasoning and often used in white sauce. Two, brown stock. An amber liquid, made by first browning, roasting poultry, beef, bale, or game bones. A brown stock is a stock that you derive the majority of your sauces with. So it is made from bones of veal or beef that have been caramelized. This caramelization produces the unique flavor and color of the brown stocks. Later on, I will give you some example of brown stocks. Next, we have number three, bouillon. In French cuisine, it is simply broth made by simmering a mirepoix and aromatic herbs, or also known the bouquet garni, with either beef, bale, or poultry. So, the question here is, what is the difference between stocks and bouillon? Anyone? Okay, so the main difference between bouillon and stock is that bouillon is made by simmering meats, whereas stock is made by simmering bones. Also, stock is generally unseasoned or only lightly seasoned while bouillon is seasoned to give it a strong flavor understood number three humane it is a concentrated stocks particularly one made from fish and mushroom used to add flavor or to less intensely flavored stock so again when you say humane it refers to concentrated mushroom and fish stocks. So the liquid left over from cooking is boiled down rapidly to a syrupy consistency. So it will be added to an accompanying sauces. Number five, consomme. Consomme is a clear soup made from richly flavored stock that has been clarified usually a fining process through the use of egg protein or the egg white. So in other words, when you say consomme, 
It is a clarified and concentrated stocks or broth that is either usually served on its own as a soup or when cooled, used as gelatin. And then number six, we have carbion. Carbion is a flavored liquid for poaching and quick cooking foods. Traditional, it is used to include poaching fish and seafoods, just like in the picture. So, in other words, when you say carbion, it is a liquid used for poaching fresh fish such as salmon, and it is made from water, white wine, or sometimes if you don't have white wine, you can use lemon juice or vinegar and other flavorings. But of course, unlike with fish stocks, it does not contain any fish trimmings. Number seven, glaze. Glaze stocks that is reduced until it coats the back of spoon, making it so concentrated. So again, when you say glaze, it refers to a thick, syrup-like reduction of stock, which is turn used to flavor other sauces. Number eight, demi glass. It is a rich brown sauce used as a base for many sauces. In other words, again, when you say demi glass, again, it is a rich sauce or a dark sauce made by combining half brown stock and half brown sauce, which called the espanol or the espanol sauce, and then reducing that it by half, which means that's why it is called demi glass because demi glass. Demi is a French term of half. So again, class, when you say demi, it means half. That's why it is demi glass. Number nine, we have remoulade. Remoulade. Rewitting stock made from bones that already been used once. Discard the mirepoix and herbs after draining and then add fresh mirepoix. Okay, so uh, when you say again remoulade, it is the second stock made from bones that have been used once for a primary stocks in order to make a complete use of the bones. So in other words, when you say remoulade, that is a weaker stocks, of course. That's why it is often added to the primary stocks and reduced. Bones for stocks are prepared by the following. Number one, blanching. To get rid of some impurities that can cause cloudiness. So, blanching is actually the steps in terms of blanching. First, of course, we have to rinse the bones in cold water to wash away the blood. And then next is impurities dissolves easily in cold water. So when you say, uh, or when you use hot water, it retards the extractions. So you have to bring the water to boil. As the water heat, it impurity, uh, impurities solidify and rise to the surface. As you can see from the picture, you can see all the impurities. So you have to drain the bones and now it is ready for the stock pot. Number two. Browning. Put the bones in an oven about 375 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour to brown. Do you know that or do you have any uh, idea about the roasting of bones for bone broth? Then you know that the longer you cook the bones in terms of browning, it nourishing the broth and at the same time, the more savory concentrated it will become. Roasting the bones and vegetable beforehand will add even more flavor and richness. Number three, we have sweating bones or shells. Bones or shell are used in fume. The proteins present in fish bones and shellfish can take on an unacceptable flavor if allowed to cook too long. So when you say sweating, 
It is a procedure that starts flavor release quickly. The stack can be cooked in less than about 45 minutes with full extractions of body and flavor. So here's are the step when it comes to sweating bones or shells. Of course, we have number one. So we have to heat a small amount of oil or clarified butter in a rondeau. And then right after that, you have to add the bones or shells and mirepoix. And then followed by, you have to cook over moder uh, in moderate heat, stirring occasionally, and then until the flesh of the bones turns opaque or the shells have a bright color. And then with that, the moisture will be releasing from the mirepoix. That will give flavor to the stocks. Four qualities are stocks evaluated on. Number one, flavor. Remember that good flavor is developed in a brown stock by caramelizing the bones and vegetables before adding them to the water. The glaze or the glazing the roasting pan and add the liquor to the stocks for additional flavor. And remember that all stocks acquire flavor from the mirepoix and bouquet garnier, as we discussed this earlier. Number two, color. Many ingredients such as carrots, leeks, tomatoes, and mushrooms will darken the color of the stocks. Using too many of these vegetables may cause your stocks to be too green or too orange. In a brown stock, color is achieved by browning the, the bones and adding tomato paste. Number three is aroma. Aroma that is appealing to the appetite. Example of this are the herbs, such as, for example, again, we have the bouquet garnet. The number four is the clarity. A clear stock is one of the free of impurities. So you have to follow these five critical steps for good stock clarity. First, you have to start again with cold water. Then, number two, always leave the stock uncovered. Number three, keep the stock as a slow simmer or simmering. And then next is never stir a stock. And then, of course, you have to skim the stock regularly after the initial boil. Okay? For our next topic, prepare sauces required for a menu item. Let's first define what is sauce or sauces. Sauce, a flavorful liquid usually to thicken, used to season, flavor, and enhance the food. It adds moisture and richness to food. Introduce complementary and contrasting flavors. Enhance the appearance of food. Add texture to the dish. Okay, so when you say sauce, again, it is a flavorful liquid that usually thickened that is used to season, flavor, and enhance other foods. It adds moistness, flavor, richness, appearance, and appeal. So one of the important components of a dish is a sauce. Sauces serve a particular function in the compositions of a dish. Structure of sauces. Number one, liquid or base of the most sauces. So it is a heavily concentrated form of stock simmered for a much longer time. So when you say liquid, again, it is a base of the most sauces. Like for example, for white stock, the base of white stock could be white sauce or simply the velouté sauce. How about the brown sauce? Brown sauce is the liquid base for the espanol. And then we have milk base is for bechamel. Then we have tomato plus stocks is for tomato sauce or sauce tomate. And then clarified butter is for hollandaise sauce. 
Number two, ticketing agent. Ticketing agents are responsible for, of course, ticketing foods. Here are the list of common ticketing agents that use in making sauces. We have letter A, starches. Starches includes flour, cornstarch, arrowroot, maize, breadcrumbs, and rice flour. Letter B, we have roux. It is a mixture of equal parts of fats and flour. Letter C, we have flour. Could be bread flour. We have all-purpose flour. But remember, bread flour is less starch. Letter D, egg yolk. Letter E, we have liaison. Liaison is a mixture of egg yolk and cream that is used to enrich and lightly thicken the use to sauce. And letter F, reduction, which later on we will discuss furthermore about these thickening agents. Five mother sauces. What is mother sauces? Do you have any idea what is mother sauces? The five mother sauces are bechamel, palute, espanol, hollandaise sauce, and sauce tomate, or simply tomato sauce. Agos first five mother sauces are the following, as seen as the building blocks of the French cuisine. And each of the five mother sauces is made with a different liquid and a different thickening agent. So with that, each sauces will be more emphasized during our discussion. So with that, let's start with number one, bechamel. Bechamel is made by stirring milk into a butter, flour, roux. The thickness of the sauce depends on the proportions of flour and butter to milk. Okay, so when you say bechamel, again, it is a basic ingredient or the basic ingredients when it comes to making a bechamel is milk, which is thickened, of course, with flour and enriched with butter. Did you know that this classic white sauce was named after its inventor, Louis XIV? So Louis XIV stewards, which named Louis the Bechamel. And another thing, bechamel is considered as the king of all sauces. So it is often referred to as a cream sauce because of its appearance and it's probably used most frequently in all types of dishes. Again, when you say bechamel, it is made of stirring milk into butter flour roux that thickens of the sauce depends on the proportions of flour and butter to milk. So the proportions for a thin sauce would be 1 tablespoon each of butter and flour per 1 cup of milk. If you wanted to have a medium sauce, you have to use 2 tablespoons of each butter and flour just to take sauce with milk, of course. And then if you wanted to make it more thicker or thick sauce, instead of using 1 tablespoon of butter and 1 tablespoon of flour, you have to use 3 tablespoons of each flour and butter and then 1 cup of milk. Next, pelute. It's a stock-based white sauce and it can be made from chicken, veal, or fish stocks. A velute is a chip ingredient as or our veal, chicken, and fish broth. And then it thickened with blonde, blonde roux. Later on, we will discuss what is the difference between the roux and other types of roux. And then, one more thing about belute. Belute is a, a white stock-based sauce. Next is espanol. It's traditionally made of a rich meat stock, a mirepoix. A mirepoix is again a nicely brown roux, herb, sometimes tomato paste. So when you say espanol, Again, it is a brown sauce that using veal stock as a base and thickened with a dark roux. 
The base of the espanol sauce made from a stock of roasted bale bones and roux, and its longer cook time permits this development of a rich character. So when you say again mirkwa, it is a brown vegetable that most often a mixture of a diced onion, carrots, and celery, as shown as in the picture. Next is hollandaise. Hollandaise is made with butter, egg yolk, and lemon juice, usually in a double boiler to prevent overheating and serve warm. So, in other words, when you say hollandaise sauce, it is an emulsified sauce or emulsion. It is prepared again by whisking together egg yolks, butter, and lemon or vinegar. The ingredients make a thickened, pudding-like consistency. So, hollandaise again are made with emulsions of egg yolk and fats. So, it is widely used as a spread, a dressing, and as a sauce. And it's generally used to embellish vegetables, fish, and egg dishes such as the classic egg benedicts. And then last is the sauce tomate or the tomato sauce. A sauce tomato is a roux and simply reducing tomatoes over medium heat until thick. So again, when you say tomato or tomato-based sauce, so a sauce or tomato sauce is a tomato-based sauce thickened with or without a roux. A liquid in a tomato sauce comes from the tomato itself, and then water or stocks added as the sauce cooks. The sauce cooks for longer times to develop the flavors. Common problems in sauce. We have number one, discarding. Number two, poor texture. Number three, oil striking. Four, oiling off. And then number five, cinerasis. Roux, a simple and basic cooking sauce made with butter and flour. So these are the procedure in making roux. Number one, melt fat. You can use butter. And then number two, add correct amount of flour and stir until fat and flour is thoroughly mixed. And then number three, cook to the desired degree of white, blonde, or brown roux. We have types of roux. So what are the three types of roux? In classic French cooking, there are three types of roux. White roux, bland roux, and brown roux. They are all contain the same ingredients, equal parts flour and fats, but the color differ based on how long you cook the mixture. First, we have the white roux. White roux is the most common and it has the most thickening power. In, in recipe for white sauce, also called bechamel and soup, you only cook the roux long enough to eliminate the flour or the flour roux raw flavor about two to five minutes. Then next is the blonde roux. It is a caramelized or caramel colored and has a nut, not your flavor. It is cooked for about 10 minutes and then you would use this type of roux to make balute but you can also use it in any recipe that calls for a white roux. And then last is the brown roux. Brown roux is the darkest. It's cooked for as long as 30 minutes. You'll end up with a maple colored mixture that doesn't have as much thickening power as the other two types, but it is deeply flavorful. In this table, you can see the methods of preparing sauces. So again, it shows the methods of preparing sauces according to its consistency. It includes the amount of or the ratio of butter, flour, and liquid ingredients used to make a sauces according to your prepared consistency. Like for example, if you wanted to have a light sauce, so the ratio for butter is 1 tablespoon, then flour is 1 tablespoon to 1 cup of milk. 
when it comes to if you wanted to have a thick sauce. So you need three tablespoons of butter with three tablespoons of flour in one cup of milk or any liquid. Basic finishing techniques in sauce making. Number one, reduction. Using reduction to concentrate basic flavors. The water evaporates when simmered. The sauce becomes more concentrated and more flavorful. Using reduction to adjust textures, the sauce may be simmered until it reaches the desired thickness. Stacks or other liquid may be added to thicken sauce to thin it out, then simmer to reduce to the right consistency. And then using reduction to add new flavors, glazes or reduc uh, reduced stacks are added to sauce to give flavor. So when you say reduction, it is a process of thickening and intensifying the flavor of a liquid mixture such as soup, sauce, or juice by simmering or boiling. Number two, straining. It is very important in order to produce a smooth, lump-free sauce. Straining through a china cup lined with a several layers of cheesecloth is effective. Again, when you say straining, it is used almost exclusively for wet things, while sieving could be used for wet things like crushed berries or for dry things such as flour. The purpose of sieving can also be to create a smooth, uniform puree. For instance, a recipe might have you force scoop tomatoes through a sieve, both to remove the seeds and skin and to puree it. A blender or food processor could be also used in terms of pureeing some ingredients, but without removing the seeds, so you have a top bits just get chopped into smaller top bits. Number three, deglazing. It means to swirl a liquid in a saute pan to cook particles of food remaining on the bottom. Liquids such as wine or stocks is used to deglaze, then reduced by one half or three fourth. This reduction with the added flavor of the pan drippings is then added to the sauce. So when you say deglazing, it is a technical term for creating a pan sauce from those brown bits of meats and fats, residues left in the bottom of the pan after sauteing or frying meat. You can also deglaze your roasting pan in the same way after roasting a piece of meat. Many of us probably deglaze a pan regularly without being aware of what it is actually called. If you add stock to the pan of sauteed onions or water to a roasting pan for gravies, then you are already in principles of deglazing. Number four, enriching. Enriching with butter and cream. Liaison mixtures of egg yolks and cream added to sauce to give extra richness and smoothness. Heavy cream added to give flavor and richness to sauce. Butter, add and soften butter to hot sauce and swear until it melts. Serve immediately to prevent separations of butter. Butter gives extra shine and smoothness to the sauce. Number five, seasoning. Seasoning, it adds and develops flavor. Example of these are salt, lemon juice, cayenne pepper, white pepper, and sherry wine. Next topic would be prepare soup for required menu items. Soup, a liquid food derived from meat, poultry, fish, and vegetables. It is a base on stock added with other ingredients for variety of flavor, consistency, appearance, and aroma. It is a well-prepared soup all meals or always make a memorable impression. So once again, when you say soup, these are base on stocks added with other ingredients for variety of flavor, consistency, appearance, and aroma. So, soups also allows to use the trimmings and leftover creatively, as what I've discussed earlier. Classification of soup. 
Number one, clear soup. Clear soup are all based on clear and chicken broth or stocks. In other words, when you say clear soup, it is a soup that made without thickener or dairy products. And it is typically clear, made by simmering meats, poultry, fish, or vegetables in liquid to create. Good day, students. Today, we will be discussing Lesson 6, Prepare Stock Sauces and Soups. Objective, at the end of the lesson, number one, the learner can identify types of stocks, sauces, and soups. And number two, to be able to explain the importance of stocks, sauces, and soups. Prepare stocks for required menu item. Again, let's first discuss or define what is stocks. Stocks. It is a flavorful liquid prepared by simmering meaty bones from meat or poultry, seafoods, and or vegetables in water with aromatics until their flavor, aroma, color, and body and nutritive value are extracted. Okay, class. In other words, when you say stocks, it is a clear, thin liquid flavor by suitable substances which is extracted from meat, poultry, and fish, and their bones, and from vegetables and seasonings. Did you know that stocks is considered as the fond de cuisine? It is referred to in French as fond de cuisine or the foundations of cooking. That's why stocks are the most or among the most basic preparation found in professional kitchen. Ingredients in preparing stocks. Number one, bones. The kind of bones used to determine the kind of stock except vegetable stock. Bones contain collagen which when simmered forms gelatin. The more gelatin there is, the more body it will have. When chilled, a good stock should actually solidify. There are types of bones that are naturally high in cartilage includes the so-called knuckle bones, which is found in large joints, and the other one is bones of the younger animals, such as the veil bones. These two are the best in making stocks. Number two, mirepoix. Mirepoix is the French term for the combination of coarsely chopped onions, carrots, and celery used to flavor stocks. In other words, when you say mirepoix, again, it is a mixture of chopped celery, onions, and carrots, which is actually a flavor base that is made from, of course, cooked diced vegetables and usually with butter, oil, or fat for a long time on a low heat without coloring or browning. Classifications of soup. Number one, clear soup, or all based on clear and chicken broth or stock. So when you say clear soup class, it is any soup made without thickener or dairy products. It's typically clear, made by simmering meat, poultry, fish, or vegetable in liquid to create a broth. An example of clear soups are, we have broth or bouillon, vegetable soup, and consomme. Number two, thick soup are opaque rather than transparent. An example of thick soup are creamy soup, puree, bisque, chowder, and fotage. Number three are the specialty in national soup, native soup from the other countries. These, again, do not form a separate classification as they represent the region of origin. For example, green turtle from the, or green turtle soup from England, French onion soup from France, and multigautony from India, and gazpacho from Spain. Number four, vegetarian soup and low-fat soup. It is a vegetable-based soup, simply a soup without meat. 
basic principles in preparing soup principle number one start with cold water most proteins vitamins and minerals dissolve in cold water part of the flavor comes from these components using hot water would lessen the flavor and nutritive content of stocks number two Cutting vegetable to appropriate size for the type of stock. The size of cuts help the maximum flavor to extract them. Example, a fish stocks only simmer for a half hour or about 30 minutes, so the cut should be julienne. Example number two, a brown stock. Simmer for about 4 to 6 hours and sometimes 24 hours so the cut should be cubed so that stock will have time to extract the flavor and will not fall apart after a long cooking. Number 3. Select your protein, base, beef, chicken, pork, and fish. All bones are washed, roasted, or balanced. Roasted for brown sauce and blanched for white stocks. Number four, simmering. Gentle extraction aid in flavor and nutrition. Boiling causes cloudiness through agitations of the ingredients. And then number five, skimming. Keep the stock clear. The scum on tops of the stock contain impurities. That is the end of our lesson. I just hope that you have learned something today. For your assignment, please do have an advanced reading on our next topic, Lesson 7, Preparing Appetizers. And please do prepare yourself to review our previous lesson because we will be having our next quiz on our next meeting during the Assess to Learn.